What is up guys? I'm John the Potter. Welcome to the studio. We have a super exciting video for you today. We're talking about my 10 essential tools in the studio. Yep, I went around, I went to the studio. I'm in the studio right now. I walked around and I took the tools that I think I love the most, that I use the most, that are the most essential to my day-to-day -day success in the studio. Uh, so I wanna share with you, I have the 10 things. But first off, I wanna share with you guys, we have some merch available. If you want a JTP t-shirt, or if you want a JTP tank top, or if you want a, a JTP hoodie, this thing is very comfortable, I have to say. Check it out, there's a link in the description below if you wanna get any JTP merch. And I think there's, I have kids shirts up there too. So we're gonna be expanding the merch line over the next year or so. Boom! All right, so this video we're talking about the essentials. Okay, the first thing on our list, things that we love in the studio, is this on the wheel trimming tool from Old Forge Creations. So so I've been using this for at least a year now, and I, it's a guy makes it, another potter, his name is Old Forge Creations on Instagram, and he's from the United Kingdom, and he makes these, and he sells them on his website, you can go buy them. What it is, is basically a tool for creating a foot on your pots while you're throwing. So you can either choose to not really trim it after, or you just need minimal trimming, but it's basically a foot tr finishing tool. It saves a ton of time, and it looks really neat. Oh, the other thing I love about it is it works really well as a drip catcher. So you can see this is a good example of a time when if that little trim in there that I use this tool for wouldn't have been there or the glaze would have dripped right off. So that's number one. Thanks Old Forge Creations for such a great tool. Number two, my essentials. So these are the two sponges that I throw with the most. So the reason I have two sponges, I love this mud tool sponges. Um, this is like a synthetic, uh, it's really soft and it is great for holding in my hand. Like if you ever see me throw, this is what I have in my hand while I'm throwing. This one is to absorb water. So this one is a great throwing sponge, but it doesn't absorb water very well. So I use this sponge while I'm throwing to sop up any water, get slip out. So there should be a link to many of these tools and these mud tool sponges in the description of the video down below. So, throwing sponges, essential. Number three is another throwing tool that I use a ton. I love this metal rib, also known as the metal rib of death. If you are a potter and you've never gotten cut by one of these, uh, then watch out because they are sharp and they will leave a mark. But I especially like the shape of this one. Probably seen other metal tools where it's just a more rounded, um, and it does have a straight edge, but this, I really like this tool. It's great for creating a shape like this. So I use the straight edge as I go up like this, and then I'll flip it around and use this edge to create that indent right there. This metal tool, and I don't actually know, I got this from a lady that I bought a bunch of her old pottery stuff from, and I just started using it, and I liked it better than those other normal metal ribs. So that is it, that's number three. The metal rib of life and death. Okay, number four and number five, they go together. Okay, so you've heard me talk maybe, or seen me use this trim tool on the wheel. So this is my favorite trimming tool from another product from Mud Tools. And basically you can use either side. You can use this side for trimming like kind of flat surfaces. And then this side works really well to trim in and get a lot of clay out at one time. And so the other number five that goes with this is this trimming spinner. So if you were taught to center the, the piece at, when you're trimming it, you probably put little pieces of clay around it to keep in the center. And I don't really do that anymore at all. I only use this trimming spinner. So basically what you do is you just put it on top of the pot, you put your finger in there, and it helps to disperse the weight. Like if you just put your finger there, then you can make an indent. It just doesn't work that well. So this helps disperse the weight so that you can just have the trimming spinner on there. Then you use your trim tool to spin. If you wanna try a little uh, 
a little hack for you. If you wanna try out this method and you don't wanna buy this trimming spinner yet, you can use a cap. Just try using a cap from a bottle. Just put it on there and use this and it'll spin around. So that's number four and five. Thanks Mud Tools, thanks Diamond Core Tools. I wanted to just share with you guys that we have an Etsy restock coming up March 9th at 6 p.m. So we have over 100, probably more like 120 pots going up. So it'll be our biggest restock yet. I know I say that every time, but they keep getting bigger. Um, tons of cool stuff, gold decals, Minnesota mugs, tons of slow cool fire micro crystal. It's gonna be exciting. So check out the next Etsy restock if you wanna get a John the Potter pot. I'd very much appreciate it. Next one, number six. A paint scraper, or I don't know what you call this, but this you just go down to your local hardware store and get a $4 one of these. I love these for taking clay whenever I throw on bats and then you take them off. I used to like, when I was in my old studio and I was super messy all the time and there was clay everywhere and it was a mess, I used to just leave the little pieces of clay on the bats after I would throw them. And we're gonna talk about bats in just a second. But now I just like take all the pots off the bats and I just right away scrape up all the uh, clay. It's so much easier, so much better. So paint scraper. You can also use these in a similar way that you use the metal rib of death. It's just a little more firm. It does not flexible, but you can use it on the side of pots too. So very useful in the studio and not expensive at all. All right, that's number six. All right, going along with the paint scraper, bats. We're gonna talk about bats. So I love using bats for a variety of reasons. I have thrown off the hump and I have thrown like where you just, you know, you throw it and then you take a wire tool and you move it. I've done that, but I, I keep coming back to bats. So these are the bats that I've been using for a couple years now. They are from Continental Clay. I love the square shape of them because a lot of what I throw is smaller pieces that fit right in the middle of there. And these fit, you can fit so many of these onto like a wear board. So I have these wear boards that are on my shelves over there and I can fit 10 of these across where if I had big circle bats like this, you can only fit like three or four. So I love the shape of this. So these bats are from Continental Clay. They're made of like a composite wood. Uh, and I have a new bat system that I am super excited about that I wanna share with you guys. It's this Russian doll bat system from Hartley and Noble. So they sent me this, Hartley and Noble is a company in, I think they're in Europe or they're in the UK somewhere. And they are a husband and wife team that makes these. And it's like such a genius idea. So you have this and you have pieces that can fit inside of this. So you just have to put this on the wheel once and then you can put pieces in like that or you can put this piece in and then you can put smaller ones. So then you can fit even more. It's all about space saving. So if you have a smaller studio and you're kind of always worried about like where you're gonna put stuff, like this is a great space saving tool for throwing super little stuff. I have, I've had this for a few months, or not a few months, a few weeks probably, and I've tried it out, it's really cool. I also really like the, both the Continental Clay bat and this bat system are not made of like a non-porous surface. This is a porous surface, so things dry more evenly on them because the water can get soaked up by both this and the Continental Clay bats too. So I like those composite MDF like wood bats better, opposed to the plastic ones, which I used to use all the time. Okay, bats. Is that number seven? Is that number six? I can't remember. These things are the Diamond Core Tools grinding discs. So these, I have three of them. I have a coarse, I have a, a medium, and a fine. And I end up using the medium a lot. So if you're just gonna buy one, then, oh, that's not the medium. This one's the medium. So basically what this is, is it comes like this, and then it has an adhesive back, so you have to use a bat to put the pad on. But then you stick it on your wheel, and as soon as your pot comes out of the kiln, if it doesn't sit flat, like if you put it on the counter and it's like wobbling a little bit, you just throw this on your wheel, start spinning it, and then put a little water down, and it goes and grinds it perfectly flat. I have literally saved hundreds and hundreds of pots with these grinding pads. I do, I love them. So they can get glaze, they get glaze off really easily, but they also just make sure that their bottoms are flat. So Diamond Core Tools, it's a great product. Pretty much every time right before I send out pots that have sold for the Etsy restocks, 
I will go through and make sure if any of them wobble, then I throw them right on the right on the wheel, right on the grinding disc, and, and then they're all good. All right, is that number eight? I think we have two more. So I recently did a whole video about these kiln shelves because they are blowing my mind how much I love them. They are so awesome. So they're lighter, they're thinner, they're all that stuff, you know, is great. But the best, best thing about them is that when glaze drips, I had to go get this pot. When glaze drips off a pot, so these were, this is a recent pot that I just unloaded from the kiln and I kept the bottom so I could show you guys. So before, when a glaze would drip off a pot onto a kiln shelf, glaze drip right there and I'd be like, uh oh, eesh. Then I'd lift it up and it would crack and it would be all like, there'd be glaze all around on the kiln shelf and then the bottom of the pot would be ruined and it was just a mess, right? So literally now, when you get a glaze drip like this, you look down there and you literally pull, I'm saying literally way too much. Somebody stop me, the literally police. You look in there, you see the glaze drips, the pot comes right off, it does, you don't have to pull it off and the bottom looks like this. And then all you have to do is just use one of those diamond grinding pads and you can just grind that right down so it's perfectly flat. Compared to the alternative where you have to like be scraping it off and then scraping it off the kiln shelf, they are, they are game changer. They are totally worth the money. I have easily saved more pots in the amount of money that I've already saved in pots, they've probably paid for the kiln shelves already. So yes, they seem expensive, but uh, the investment really can quickly pay for itself. So, fave tools, Advancer Kiln Shelves. Oh, I'm gonna be at the Advancer Kiln Shelf booth at Ensika, so if you're going to Ensika, come uh, check it out. I'm gonna be with these guys and with Mako Glazes as well. The final essential tool that I have, which it also goes with the Kiln Shelves, is their Glaze Eraser. So this is made of the same stuff, and so, there's little pieces of the columns that will get stuck to there. And this is a tool to just like <laughs> scrape it and make it flat again. And you can use the flat side to go like this. Or you can use this on your pots too. If there's anywhere on your pots that have like a little area that's not smooth, you can just take this and kind of. So that's it. That is my 10 tools that I am loving right now. Uh, ask me again in six months and I might have a new 10, but those are my those are my essentials. I couldn't live without them. So go check them out. There's links to a lot of this stuff in the description. They're either on Amazon or Old Forge Creations or Mud Tools or whatever, like Diamond Core Tools. So go check them out. If you guys wanna order anything from any of these companies, uh, let them know that I sent you because this was not sponsored by any of them. Uh, a couple of them have sent me that stuff for free or given me discounts, but they're, nobody's paying me anything to do this video. So, <sighs> is that all? I think that's all. I think that's all for us today. I love you all. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thanks to all the patrons on Patreon. I love you. We, I think we just went over like 100 patrons on Patreon. So they get pots sent out every month to the patrons. They get little special, I try and do what I can to provide that extra value for them. That's it for this video. As always, leave a comment below. What are your favorite tools in the studio? I would love to know. And of course, as always, subscribe, like, share, comment, all the things. See you guys in the next video. Top. Such a cozy sweatshirt. <laughs> Check it out. JTP. JTP shirts. One too far.